Shalom, shalom. Hey, this is Apostle Nabia. I'm waiting for some of you guys to get on here. Let me see if I could turn this thing around this way. Oh, that's better. Hey, Yolanda. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, my neck. Mm. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on my iPad today. It looks kind of weird to me because if I'm looking that way, then I'm supposed to be looking that way because the camera is over there. So, I don't know. It looks weird. Let me turn it around. Okay, that's better. That looks regular. But if you if you if your screen is not full, then you probably need to flip your phone around just in case. So if it ever looks like that, that's a heads up. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about um praying in the spirit. Um Apostle Bernard, some of you guys um know him and if you do not, please follow him on uh Twitter, follow him on Periscope. His handle is Ideal Writer, Ideal, I-D-E-A-L Writer, Ideal Writer, Apostle Bernard Bolton. And um, he's been doing um, 21 Days of Praying in the Spirit. Now, um, he has not been on every day because of um, circumstances beyond his control, but um, he has really been pressing in and, and been prophesying on Periscope, giving words of encouragement, and talking about the power of um, speaking in tongues or praying in the Spirit. And so, um, he's not on today. I was looking for him. He was on yesterday, and I missed him. But um, he is uh, a former um, student of mine of Hebrew, and um, I've just been watching him grow in leaps and bounds. The Lord has really been using him mightily. He's a pastor. He's an apostle. He's a scribe. Um, he has authored several books. One of the books are called, Do You Want to Be Made Whole? Um, another book is called, um, The Purpose of Prophetic Preaching. Um, he, he's just doing a lot right now. And he has an organization called Watchmen on Wall. So if you can, please, um, follow him. Um, I'm going to be coming out of the book of Acts chapter two, and I'm going to be talking about um, the power of praying in the spirit. And I do want to share with you, I woke up at about five o'clock this morning and I honestly didn't want to get up. Usually I'm up, I'm on the wall, I'm praying and I couldn't do it this morning. I just, because I have been up, I don't know, I went to sleep late, then I got up at three, I woke up at four. It was not cute. It was just not cute. And so I'm sharing this because there are times in your lives when you just don't have the the energy or the wherewithal to get up and do what needs to be done. And, you know, we can always tell ourselves, oh, well, you know, I'll go back to sleep and I'll do it later. And so my my daughter, she was up. She was getting herself ready. And um, actually, when I got up, I, I kind of dragged myself out of the bed, went in her room and um, she was laying there and I was like, um, you need to get up. And I said, but I'm so tired. I just, I just can't, I can't. She said, well, go to bed. So I went back in my room. I turned the light on in the prayer room, went back in my room and I really was going to go back to bed. I promise you, I was going back to bed because I just couldn't. And then I began to just pray in the spirit because your spirit is supposed to override your soul. It's supposed to override your flesh. And the only way that it is able to do that, if you have been feeding it on a consistent basis, you are supposed to nourish your soul by ways of your spirit. So when you nourish your spirit, man, which means basically eating the word of God, feeding on the word of God, intimacy with the Lord, spending time with him, um, you edify your spirit and one of the ways that you do that is by praying in the spirit or what people um, call speaking in tongues. The book of Acts talks about, and I'm reading it from the complete Jewish Bible because I like a more accurate um, rendition of the word. 
uh, since Hebrew is the original language of the Bible. Um, the festival of Shavuot, which I know most of you are familiar with, Shavuot, um, or Pentecost. The festival of Shavuot arrived and the believers all gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from the sky like a roar of a violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which separated and came to rest on each one of them. Verse 4. They were all filled with Ruach Kakodesh, Holy Spirit, and began to talk in different languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. That is key. The Spirit enabled them to speak. Verse 5. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, that's Jerusalem, um, religious Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were confused because each one heard the believers speaking in his own language. That is so powerful. Now, and that is also known as Apostle Shaul, or Apostle Paul calls that the known tongue or the known language. Um, so, verse 7 totally amazed, they asked, How is this possible? Aren't all of these people who are speaking from the Galil or the Galileans, Galileans, how is that we hear them speaking in our native languages? We are Par Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Yehuda, that's Judah, um, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, um, Phrygia, um, Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, verse 11, Jews by birth and proselytes. Um, uh, proselytes are, if you don't know, those are those that converted to Judaism. Um, Jews from Crete and from Arabia. How is this that we are hearing them speaking in our own languages about the great things God has done? Please remember that verse, verse 11. Amazed and confused. They were amazed and confused. Um, they all went on asking each other, what can this mean? But others made fun of them. Stay with that verse as well. They just had too much wine. And of course, you know, Kepha or Peter stood up and told them, you know, it was too early for us to have had wine. So, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to rest on that. But I do want to pay attention to the portion of the verse where it said that they were all speaking in, Hey, Pastor, how are you? Pastor Tip, thanks for joining. And so I do want to stay on the, the, the portion of the, the scripture where it's talking about, one, they were totally amazed. Two, they were talking, bless you, sir, bless you. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about somebody else. God bless you, woman of God, how are you? Thank you so much for joining. And so, and please feel free to add if you have anything to say about this speaking in the spirit. Um, these people were totally amazed. Now look at all the various languages that they were speaking. They said from, from Egypt, from Serene, um, parts of Libya, um, Jews from Arabia. They were just talking in different languages. And so when we hear people speaking in the spirit, there's two types. One is the known tongue that Apostle Paul talks about, and then there's the unknown tongue. The unknown tongue is when you are speaking to God and, and nobody knows what you're saying. So when Apostle Paul says pray in, your, pray in your understanding and pray in the Spirit, you're praying also in a language that you don't know. Now that unknown tongue, again, is the, the only one that knows that language is God. There is no man that can interpret it except the Lord give him the interpretation because that's not a known language. Um, also, the known language, for instance, your tongue could be Greek, or it can be a, a dialect from Africa, or China, or Greece, or Hebrew, or Arabic, or Aramaic. That is a known tongue. That means that when you open your mouth, there's somebody on this planet that can, in the natural, know what, exactly what you're saying. And it has happened. I have gone and um, I have gone and I was in a hospital and it was run by a lot of people that were Asian. But, you know, there's a whole lot of dialects in Asia, you know, Chinese, the Japanese, there's, you know, all, the, all these different dialects, Vietnamese. And when I went up to the lady, I said, excuse me, I said, is that Mandarin? And she said, oh, do you speak Mandarin? 
Now, I couldn't tell her the Lord told me. I mean, maybe if I was more mature, I could have told her that and then explained. But I, the Lord told me it was Mandarin. Now, I'm looking at an Asian woman. Normally, when you see somebody Asian, you just immediately think Chinese. But the Lord told me it was Mandarin. And I knew it by the Spirit. I knew that it was Mandarin. So, so people have to understand there are two types of tongues. There's the known language. Again, I have to say this again, other languages that are in the earth, whether you know them in the natural or not, hey, sport lady, and then there is the unknown language, which there is no earthly understanding of that. And the only way they can get it is if God give it to him. And also God can give you the, the other one too, but I'm just talking about for the purpose of explaining the known tongue and the unknown tongue. Now, as I said this morning when I got up, I could not. I was like this. I had no energy. I, I just couldn't do it. And so my normal time for warfare standing on the wall is at 5 a.m. And, and I couldn't. But when I began to pray in the spirit, it just shifted me. It told my soul to wake up. My soul was aroused. I was on point. I was in the face of the Lord. And I had to go into warfare, especially where my daughter is concerned. Because, you know, when somebody is not in a, uh, in a, a you know, a restored state or a strong state, um, you have to have their back in the realm of the spirit. And so even when I'm praying for somebody, when I say I got your back, not only am I praying for you in my heavenly language, not only am I praying for you in my understanding, I am literally writing out the prayers because that's that what that does. It establishes why, why is it established it? Because it's written. It is written. And when you write something, it's like a covenant. It's like a contract. Amen. And so the, your, your praying in the spirit will shift you when your, your spirit is supposed to command your soul, not the other way around. A lot of people have, are, are, are led by the nose or led by their soul. They're in their flesh. They're carnal. They can't, you know, like, oh, well, I just don't feel like it. Oh, well, I'm just tired. Well, I just, you know, well, this is just the way that I shut up, snap out of it, knock it off. Please knock it off. You're going to have to grow up. And the only way you can do that, beloved, is to feed your spirit, the word of God. And then that way it is strong enough. You have to build up your inner man. You have to build it up. You build it up. In the book of Jude, and it's only one chapter, it says to building up your most holy faith. You have to build up your spirit by praying in the spirit. And, you know, I we were walking. We did a hike yesterday um, for four miles. It was great. My legs are a little sore, but I'm all right. But I had her praying until we got back to the car. And it took us about, I think I had her praying for about 45 minutes in the spirit you have to i mean you build it up and it's easy it's that that's like sweatless because you're not doing it out of your flesh you cut you just saw rabba shaky horrible boho shaking you know your your tongues are supposed to change over time i can't even remember what i sounded like when i first began praying in the spirit i have no idea when you get to a new level in God, when you have a new mantle, when you have new assignments, when you are being elevated in the natural and in the spirit, he, you get new tongues. It changes. It has to. Because if it does not change, that means you are stagnant. That means that your spirit man is not growing and that it needs to get recalibrated. It needs to be resuscitated. It needs to be invigorated. You have to roll your, 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 oh, how can I say this? Oh, my goodness. The Bible says that if you draw nearer to God, he will draw nearer to you. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and then he will flee. Now, part of that submitting to God is following his precepts, following his teachings, following his statutes. This right here and this flesh right here don't want to do it. 
So the only way that you can do it, the only way for you to take on this assignment, the only way to walk out your charge is to have your spirit taking over your whole existence. Why? Because if you don't, your flesh will be telling you what to do, what it feels like. And I'm not talking about when you when your body really is tired and you have to sleep, but because you do have to. That's why God gave us sleep because we need to sleep. You know, if you know that you are on a certain schedule, you have to put um, uh, your your prayer time or whatever your assignments in your schedule. We all have the same 24 hours a day. I don't care if you're in Eastern Standard Time or Central Standard. It doesn't matter. It's still 24 hours. And you have to purposely and intentionally put um, in your schedule what needs to be done. I don't care if you just read in one scripture a day. You, it is by the word of God that we are living. It is not by bread alone that we live, but by the word of God. And so the word of God needs to be deposited in us. We have to insulate our spirit man with the word of God because that is how we gain strength. Why is that? Because Yeshua said, my word is spirit and my word is life. My word is spirit and my word is life. That's what Yeshua said. So we have to cling to the life, the word. We have to cling to it. We have to eat it. We have to mutter it. We have to meditate on it. Joshua 1 and 8, and starting from verse 7, it says, Do not let this book of the Lord depart out of your mouth, but to, but to meditate in it day and night. And then, it says, and then you will have good success. It didn't say sometimes. It says day and night. And we have to train our spirit. Shalom, shalom, Sandy. How are you? You have to train your spirit. And then your spirit will be able to command your soul. I will be so glad when I finish this book at the end of this month. It's called Spirit Command My Soul. And that's the only way, beloved, that you are able. You did? Okay. Awesome. I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll look. Amen. Thank you, Torah Keeper. Um, and let me know if you're Torah Keeper on Facebook or if you have a different name because I get so many and I like to answer everyone. Um, so on the festival of Shavuot, it says the believers arrived in how many places? One place. One is the number four agreement. Okay, I'll, I'll check it. One is the number four agreement. Okay. All right. Amen. I got you. One is the number for agreement. You know what? The other thing that I found interesting in this verse in Acts chapter two, that it said that people were making fun of them. And we know that non-believers, those people that are in the dark, those people that don't, don't believe in Yeshua, they have not been um, regenerated. Um, they will make fun of it because people will make fun of those things that they don't understand. And you know, when uh, Apostle Paul says that, you know, you don't need to be just randomly speaking tongues in church around a bunch of non-believers because they don't understand and they're going to say, he says, they're going to think that you're mad. You're going to, they're going to think you're crazy. They're going to think you lost it. So we want to be wise in how we're doing it. The other thing that really bothers me, and I'm going to have to go on a 30 second rant, stop playing with these tongues. I used to do it. I used to do it. I, I admit, I used to do it. You just making joke talking about I'm in the Moshe right now. I'm in the Hikama. I mean, I used to do that. It was just but you can't do it. God gave these gifts as your power source. He gave it gave it to you as a gift and he gave it as a, a deposit. Like Holy Spirit is a deposit, a down payment on what we will get in the eternal. We gotta stop playing with this thing. Because you, you you leave yourself open to attacks. And so I please count it as a sacred, a sacred, a sacred, a sacred gift. It is not a joke. It's not something that you can play with. You use it in prayer. You use it for war. You use it for intercession. Because when you don't know what to pray, Holy Spirit will hijack you and take you over and show you who you should be praying for, how you should be praying. Because when you don't know what you need, Ruach Kodesh, Holy Spirit knows what you need. Amen. All right. Amen. 
Yes, 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 yes. There's something, there's another point in here that I did want to, to make or bring to your attention. I mean, it was just really interesting that all of these, all of these people, um, they, they were not learned people. You know, when you came from a certain culture, a certain section, they already knew that you wasn't too bright. But when they hear the wisdom of God coming out, that makes them stand back. So they were saying, they were saying, they were amazed and confused. And they said, well, what does this mean? That is a teaching moment. That is an opportunity. That is a, a, a evangelistic time and season for you to minister to them about just how great God is. And so when they were all praying in the spirit, they all heard it in their own language. And the only thing that they heard them talking about was the glory of God, praising the Lord, magnifying the Lord. They were all doing it. Even though they didn't know what they were saying, they were praying in the spirit and giving God the glory. But And, and the reason... No photos here. Photos? What photos? Yeah, can you see? Can you see my website? Hold on, it's it's, a, it's blank right now because it's switching. I'm in my actually in my editing. Can you see it? Okay, good. Awesome. So it's bhncollege.com. And my my website has been acting lately. Let me go um Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I so some of my class. That's one class. It's called Moving Past Your Past, and I'm in my admin, so it looks a little different. But yeah. Yeah. So that's my website. Browse courses. Yeah, so I have different, very different classes here. Scribe School, Reclaiming Your Voice. Y'all better go on the website. Y'all looking at it from my, <laughs> from my periscope. Yeah, so those are classes. All right. Okay, bhncollege.com. I'm going to flip my screen back. All right, guys. So, all right. I will talk to you all a little bit later. You guys can listen to the replay about praying in spirit and how powerful it is. Just charge yourself. Get yourself ready to hear from the Lord. Let him use you to intercede. For not just your own life and your own ministry and your family, but other people. And he wants to just draw you closer to him, closer to himself. So that you know, so he'll show you things that you have not known before. That's, you know, the whole point of, um, the whole point of praying in the spirit is to edify your spirit so that you can take charge of your soul. Amen. All right, so. I will talk to you later. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. I'll talk to you later.